Hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is where you are. Hello. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is today is September 1st, 2018, and this is this is my live stream and I like to call it Fritz and Friends. We're going to write a little code together today. Uh, let's take a look over at the chat room. A couple folks are already here. There's Cobra Sam. Good morning. I think you said it's it's evening. <laughs> good evening. Uh, Smoked Coder is here. Chrono803. Good morning. Coded Beard. Afternoon. Afternoon. And Brave Cobra is back. Lennon BR. Hello, hello. Justin Horner is here. Hey there. All right. It's great to see some of our friends are here. Um, so today, today I'm wearing my Penn State hat with the, with the cool lion's paw on the side. Um, it's the first day of the college football season. I need like a Penn State marching band theme here that I can play. Um, let's see if we can, hang on, let's see if we can do that real quick. Uh, do a thing over here with the stuff. Because I am, I am a Penn State, a Pennsylvania State University alumni and, uh, Real happy that today's the first day of the of the season. Uh, sure, play me some music. Come on, I want to hear the band. Get, get to the band. There's the band. All right. This is. As a student, you showed up for Penn State games and had a blast. 100,000 people in the football stadium, and it was amazing. As a student, as a, as a college kid, 20-some years old, oh my gosh, what an experience. They're like a freaking army. So, so today's the first day of the season. And we're pretty happy. We're pretty excited about that here at the Fritz house. So that's why we got the Penn State hat, Ellen. Uh, Coding Monkey, thank you so much for that subscription. And Cobra Sam, oh my gosh. So two months in a row for Coding Monkey. Thank you. Thank you. And Cobra, thank you for joining us. Um, you're, of course, going to get access to the, the .NET bot emote. Use that wherever fine emotes are are usable here on Twitch and Discord, I guess. Um, and if, But uh, I'm going to match your uh, your subscriptions, and we're going to make a donation together to Girl Develop It. They help women and underserved minorities uh, learn how to write code just like we're doing here on this channel. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, I really appreciate it. Unable to sleep because of watching my streams. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> Um, I, I want to point out the Rainbow Coding Challenge here over my shoulder. We are at 3470. We've got a little bit more than a month and a half to go. I don't think we're going to make 5,000. I don't think we're going to make it. But we'll have some fun pushing the rest of the way there. So it's a, it's a bit of a reach, yes, smoked coder. I think that's what you're insinuating with the squid there. <laughs> so... Uh, let's get some music playing here in the background. Um, so this is, of course, music to code by from our, our friend Carl Franklin. Um, scientifically engineered music to get you in the flow, to get you focused, to get you into a trance. So that you get stuff done, just like we're going to do here. Uh, Bricky's, Bricky's BW, thank you so much for the follow. And that alarm didn't look right at all. Where's that alert? Alert notifications. Those should be up a bit. Uh, yeah, probably even on top of that. All right. Uh, you love squids. Okay. More power to you. Carl rocks. He does. So today, um, today let's play. Let's play uh, Green is the name of this song. I haven't listened to this in a while. It's just groovy, mellow music. Designed to make you relax and just get crap done. Let's see, I think it might be a little loud there. Let's pull it down. 
There we go. All right. Uh, Huff CMC. Hello, hello. Yes, you, you'll hear this music on .NET Rocks. So, um, I made an announcement yesterday. <clears throat> I didn't, I, I need to post this. I need to get this on the wall somewhere. Our friend Smab had a little bit of fun at my expense. Hey, Joker. And put together a theme for our core wiki application. That's what we're going to be working on today. Um, that was quite bright and quite inspired by the, uh, by the Rainbow Beard Challenge here. Um, and uh, I thought it was... I thought it was fun. I thought, you know, it would be... Yeah, you. It, you, right there. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. Let's go over to our code. And, uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about you over there. Woo! All right. <clears throat> so if we look at our core wiki application... Looks pretty standard. Looks pretty garden variety, nice and clean and conservative. And then there's this. Oh, it didn't load. No, it's reverting. There it is. Yeah. At my expense. <laughs> Poking fun at, at the... Yes, enjoyed your struggle with Docker over the last few streams. Yes, we've got it working, and I'm I'm in the midst of writing a blog post about that coding monkey. Um, enjoyed my struggle. And you blow it! I didn't blow it. I got it working. So we had this really neat theme for, for CoreWiki. It's rainbow. I'm not sure how many folks are going to use this. But we also have, we have a dark theme. We have that default theme. We have the ouch theme. And now the rainbow theme. And I thought it'd be kind of fun if we could put together some more of these. So I'd like to encourage you, if you'd like to build a theme, send over a pull request. That's great. Over the next two weeks, we'll take a look at all the themes that come in and we'll, we'll choose one as the best, the coolest theme, because you can change more than the background here, right? You can change the background to more than just colors. You can put textures in there. You can change out the logo in, in the corner. Let's show off how flexible and how cool uh, CoreWiki's theming capabilities are that, that we've built here. And uh, whoever we choose to, to be it right, to have the coolest theme, I'm gonna send out uh, either a Works on My Machine Ship It mug or phone case, your choice, and uh, as a token of thanks for participating and having a little bit of fun with us here on the stream. So, take a look. You, you know where the source code is. It's out here on GitHub. GitHub.com, C Sharp Fritz Core Wiki. Send over a pull request. Tag it with the... There is a, a label here. Theme contest. Uh, it's right over my head. There it is. And uh, we'll take a look. Whoever has the best one will send out a mug or phone case, whatever, whatever makes you happy. They're both the same price to me. It doesn't matter. So, um, cool. Now what I wanted to do today, we spent a lot of time building and integrating and writing a lot of cool stuff here in CoreWiki. Let's make this, let's make this a little bit more real. Let's actually push this out to a real location, someplace out on the net that folks can get to and actually work with and start finding and using the application. Now, we've been working through this project called New Data Architecture, and I think we've actually done pretty much everything here. We've introduced Mediator, so I'm gonna move that over. Split the domain logic from the database layer and UI towards DDD and CQRS. I think we've finished that. Um, and just in thinking about the project and what we've accomplished, looking at our project uh, new data branch, I think we're done with the migration. And I wanted to review that real quick with you today. And if we are, I'd like to merge it into the dev branch 
and then create a release and publish. So let's take a look see here. Uh, I'm going to of course open Visual Studio because that's what I use to build this application. You could use Visual Studio Code, you could use Visual Studio for Mac. Um, whatever makes you happy. Not, I don't need my server explorer. I need, um, um, where's the application? There it is. In my eyes, not even close. No, we're not done. Done, done. This application I don't think will ever be done. Is it done migrating to using Mediator? Mm, probably close enough. We've moved a lot over there. There's a lot more that we can refactor and we can continue to refactor. Yeah, there, there's plenty there to do. Enrique Gomez. Gomez? Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate that. Um, and Pogao. Oh my gosh, thank you for the follow. I appreciate our new followers here. I look forward to seeing you in the chat room and answering your questions. Um, so looking at what we've done here, right? And the big thing was I wanted to move the database connections out of the web application. How we refactor and build the 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 application server is kind of secondary. That's, that's something that's happening along the way that um, I'm extremely happy with. But I'm, I don't want to hold up actually having a production space for this, for that. Um, I think it's something that we can continue to update out there. So like our create page, we're not doing any database interactions directly here now. We've moved this out. Um, there's a little bit here to check if it's available. Actually, I'm in the wrong branch. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, let's change branches. No, that one. Cool. Um, yep, reload. <laughs> All right. Let's look at that again. So here we're using mediator, slug to topic here inside of our create page. We're, we've removed all the database interaction. I think create our article from link. This one still needs to be updated, but I'm, this isn't as big a deal as the create, uh, create, delete, details, pages. So mediator publish on post. So I'm fine with those. The details page here, really the get is doing a mediator send to go get the article. And there's all kinds of things that we need to layer in here around, uh, around um, um, caching and production optimization. You don't do many commits or use many regions. Why? What? What do you mean? I poked around yesterday with the code and I've got some really clean code left over. Awesome. Okay. So details looks pretty good with having removed those database interactions. So the only one I'm seeing so far is create article from link that we still need to refactor. Edit here. Looks like edit needs to be updated because it's still hitting a repository here. Um, on post. Yep, we need to do that one. Uh, let's see. I, error, no. History. History is going to be very similar to details. Yeah. We need to update that one. So, some of these pages were, were pretty close on. Search, I thought we did. No. We did not do that one yet. We did a number of these pages. But we didn't quite get there. Pages should only get the mapper and the mediator, nothing else. Completely agreed, Brave Cobra. With the type of architecture that we are embracing, our pages should not interact with, um, with the database, should not interact with domain objects. Instead, they're going to be receiving just the ability to communicate with the application server and request their DTO objects, their data transfer objects that they can then turn into view models that they'll share with the screen, right? Share with the folks that are uh, visiting the website. So 
Um, I think we need to touch on just these one or two pages here. Delete, I thought was, delete was fine, right? Yep, mediator send. So I'm gonna collapse up that. Details, I think was fine. I think Ashley had blown through here and finished this one. The notification stuff we can move out yet. But I'm not, I'm not gonna get wound up on that one right now. But edit, I think we needed edit or, error we don't need history is very easy to do so i think it's just create article from link history and search are the three that we need to to touch on and then we can merge and do a deployment here today so i think that's going to be our goal what do you think am i on the right page here we can make these couple of migrations and we'll be ready to go and then I think uh, we can look at some more refactorings next week. We only used Ashley code. Can we do another mediator conversion like the ones you suggested? Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to do those here this morning. Uh, Val Dene, good morning. Get the pages cleaned out. Uh, define cleaned out. Give me a little bit more detail there, Brave Cobra. We're, I think we're cleaning these out pretty pretty well. Um, let me know. Create article from link. Let's take a look at what's happening. Yes, no more repositories. I think the only place that we want to have repository coming out of this, out of this exercise, is maybe in the security interactions. And even then, we'll look at refactoring those in the future. But yes, none of these pages, to, to Brave Cobra's point, who should be receiving a repository object. We don't want our pages directly interacting with the database because that may change. We, we are going to introduce other applications in the future. We may write a UWP app or a Xamarin app that runs on a phone or a watch. Core wiki on the watch, that'd be kind of cool. Anyways, um, so we want to move that to a central location so we can have multiple different types of applications that interact. Can you show me how to get local Windows debugger for C++? Um, it comes with Visual Studio. It should be in the box. And when you start in, and when you open a C++ application, you should be able to attach to it. Otherwise, um, there is a Windows debugger that you can download from one of Microsoft's sites. Um, and even VS Code, yep. Yeah, but it don't working. I... I <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to be able to help you with that. Um, um, we've... Uh, yeah, the seat, that's not something that I can that I can cover right now. Um, do me a favor and drop it, drop me a message on Twitter, and I'll see about connecting you with some folks who can help you out with that. Um, all right, let's take a look at this create article from link. So it, right now it's receiving an article repository and a clock. The clock I'm not, I'm. I think we, we also need to push around as well, right? We want to move that out. Now, create article from link is when somebody clicks on a link that, that should be an article and we actually need to create something that, that lives out there for us to um, interact with. So this is reaching out through article helpers, get articles to create and it's actually what this actually does if you look at this is it's parsing the content and looking for link text uh, da, 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 find wiki article links right and returning those links and then that's what it's using to say these are the these are the um, articles we need to create yep and this this type of code, this this logic around creating articles, it shouldn't be hooked up to, right? This is on a class that's 
that's just hanging out here as a helper, and it really should be more of an application service, something that's going to be available across the entire CoreWiki platform, so that no matter how you're interacting with an article um, inside of the, the system, we want to be able to do these sa same things wherever you are. So I named it the article reading service in the docs. There you go. Yeah. So um, this is actually, right, we've, we've got it here inside the web project and this needs to move out. This type of thing that, that interacts with the articles needs to go go somewhere that it can be shared all right so um and looking here find wiki article links is down here i'm just trying to see if there's anything no so this type of interaction is business logic but i'm i'm looking at this and thinking all right where do we move it and it's either going to go into the the core project that basically shares a bunch of APIs that are common and used across the entire application, or it's going to go into our application project that actually already has an article helpers here. Is it the same thing? It's the same thing. <gasps> we already moved it in here. All right, then you know what? I'm nuking this one. Oh, I love to delete code. Duplicate code. Hey, Commander. What tools can you use to zoom in on the Solution Explorer in Visual Studio? Huh, let me tell you. Uh, I've got this. Whoa! All right. I'm not sure how well that worked. But it's definitely something I know that's that's really small up there and uh, let's see can I do uh, do I have nope um, <laughs> let's see here uh, fonts and colors hello I'm clicking on you show settings for wouldn't it be nice if this was in alphabetical order? I'm just saying. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. Um, because I'm trying to find Solution Explorer now. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Where is it? Because I'd like to bump up the font size. Yeah. Right. Yeah, zoom it. Zoom it's nice. Windows Plus works on any machine, on any Windows machine. Um, <laughs> no, I don't see it. Well, that feels lame. All text tool windows. That's not what it is, though. No. It's, it's almost like I was looking for Explorer windows, but I don't see that either. Threads window? No. Watch window? No. 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 This is a good question. Blind as a bat. Yeah. Any plans to do more F-Sharp Fridays? Yeah, we're going to get back to them in... It's, go it's going to be October. We're going to get back to that. Um, September is crazy with activity here on stream on Fridays. We have our DevOps workshop next week. We have uh, .NET Conf the week after. I have a week to rest. And then I have uh, uh, Ignite. <laughs> it's busy. It's busy. September is going to be crazy here on the stream. Um, uh, Visual Studio uh, Solution Explorer font size there's got to be a way to do this 
Change the font size of Visual Studio Solution Explorer. Tools, options, show settings, choose environment font. No. Tools, options, yeah. Punk. Um, no, it's just environment font. Environment. Size 11. That's kind of crazy. It works, but that's a little bit much. So that was 11. I'm going to take it to 14. I think that helps a bit. Yes, busy, busy. So I can use my echolocating capabilities. I'm, I'm not going to do the whole dolphin thing that Doc does. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we removed article helper from our web project. So, and even then, right? It's it's uh, down here in our common. Um, we're going to end up refactoring this a bit, but I'm okay with it now being moved out away from us. So I'm going to close that one. So here we are, still create. So. This bit here on get, right? So let's let's think about this one, um, and let me turn on the live unit testing just to make sure we don't break anything. Needs caffeine, yes. I agree, Smap. It did change too many things. Environment and it just across the board did stuff. All right, let me bring in a using statement so that it still works. Um, now, why am I getting a... Ah, because we moved that one out as well. From here. Let's nuke that one. Cool, okay. One more here. Link to title case. Now, why doesn't it like that? String helpers is in both places. I'm gonna pull Test Explorer way down here. Uh, so string helpers is down here, and it's also up here. Yeah, I think we can remove that one also. Cool, all right. So now that all just works. And our tests, they should just do their thing. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of caffeine for this one. Uh, no. Alright, so this is going to be a case of... We need a bunch of using statements. Alright, here we are on the delete page. Yup. Details, same thing. Edit page, yup. All right. I, I saw what you did there. All right. So I think we cleared that out. Okay, back on create article. This should run on now. Restore completed. Needed copies in the application when doing mediator. No, not a problem. Would like to continue to run, no. It's This is more of the exact same thing. It's not coming back and telling us immediately, oh. Gosh. Right, this is create article. I and it's not even going and finding these pages. You make me sad.
Come on. Do the thing. Yeah, it's giving me the exact same errors. String does not contain a definition, and it's not even navigating to them. Look at this. I am going to close and reopen the solution because something is out of sync. And now if I rebuild. Got a couple of warnings around the weights, it looks like, but... Oh, it's in the razor. Okay. Oh, rats. All right, let's go back over to the razor. This is create article from link. So this is saying to title case, and to title case, <clears throat> is in right there was a reference down here this one here's what I'm going to do to cheat I'm going to put a using for this inside of our view imports which will make all of those go away. Some of the string helpers are display specific. Uh, we'll figure that out. String helper tests. Okay. This is saying that it cannot find Yep. Need the right namespace. One more time. <laughs> some of them are display specific, some of them are not. Um, cool. That works. All right. Right, looking at what's in string helpers, we have word count, calculate read time, to title case, remove hyphens. They're fine. The URL helpers that are here, um, these end up right helping to format how we're going to create URLs to navigate around and, and actually name our pages. So... These are actually, I'm pretty okay with going into a mobile app as well because we're going to use, if we if we create content, we still need to create URL-friendly content as it gets uh, interacted with from the application. So I'm, I think we're okay with those moving. Might be odd for a split, maybe. But I, I think we're okay for right now. What other projects are you thinking about doing in the future on stream? I think there's an opportunity to do... I've been hinting at a mobile application that's a front for this. I've also worked on some other tools to interact with Twitch APIs. Um, word count seems more domain-specific. Yes, and it's. I think it's living in the application now. Yeah, it's in the application. We can move it to core. Um, it's shuffling things that I'm not not my top priority right now to get them exactly where they need to land I want to get them out of out of the web application um, but coding monkey I think there's um, I think there's an opportunity to to build a couple of these other side applications that'll support core wiki I think there's um, we started working on some some sample processing for as a .NET command line tool. I think we need to go back to that at some point. We have a bunch of different options that we can go to. I think we're having a lot of fun though with with this application right now. 
Um, all right. I, I want to get through this one, these couple of refactorings here today and get this deployed. So I'm going to, um, I want to get rid of this on get, move everything out, and then the on post as well into a series of commands and command handlers. So right now, uh, right now we have create new comment, create new article. Um, right, when we're, this is going to be a query to get. Get an article by the slug. Um, get articles to create. All right, so this was inside the article helper and it returns a list of articles to create. This feels like this should be an application service. Right, this should be a command handler or a query handler. And yes. Yeah, this should be a query. So let's create a query called get articles to create. Oh, look. There already is one. And it's already got a handler that does this, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're on get here. Right? If this returns... Return articles to create distinct list. Yeah. So that's a list of strings. Nuke it. Yeah. I think we're I think we're ready to to nuke what's in here. Uh, is that Zealous? One, two, three. Welcome. Thank you for the follow. And it looks like we got another one. X Lone Song. Thank you for the follow as well. I appreciate you joining us here. Steve, you're you're getting busy here. You're Take it easy there, fella. All right, um, so I'm going to remove these and we're going to receive by mediator, mediator, and uh, an I mapper. Actually, I don't even think we, do we need the mapper? We might not need the mapper on this one. Let's, let's see. Uh, yeah, you know what, nuke those. This dot. Mediator equals mediator. Create one of these. All right, and then I'm going to get rid of those. And then what I should be able to do, uh, that null gate is fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. Our guck. Or is it RGUK? I think it's RGUK. Welcome. Thank you for the follow. Uh, let's see. Let's say result equals um, await mediator. And uh, we are going to, I believe we're going to send. Yeah. And this is going to be a new get articles to create from link. Right. No, to create from article. Uh, and we need to pass in the slug, that ID. Uh, oh my gosh, look who's here. Michael Eaton, font discussion from earlier. This extension is really helpful. Present on, present off. Yes, I completely agree. Mike's got a great extension there the quick launch tasks. Um, I've already got present on turned on. I just needed to bump it up a little bit. Yup. Uh, okay, so is it RGUK or is it RGUK? <laughs> uh, let me know. All right, so get my using statement there. So my result now is gonna be an array of strings. Now, 
if the article, if it doesn't get an article, let's look at this. Um, well, it doesn't matter if it doesn't get an article, right? Then we're going to be returning null anyway, right? We're going to be returning an empty string. So if it, Hmm. I think I need to do a check to, to get the article first. Let's do that. Uh, mediator send new get article. And then the, one of those. And then I can do this. Right, if article is null, return article not found result. And this should now be the article. Uh, all right, so then we're gonna go get the articles to create from that article, which does this and that. Let's call, right, links to create is a list of strings. This returns an array of strings. So let's call this Um, and I'm going to want to put a to list around this so I get the same deal coming back. Cool. I am now so in happy tears. Oh, RGUK. There we go. <laughs> After watching the Formula One Italian GP. Oh, yeah. What's uh, what's happening? That's so great there. Um, so we don't need this. And then that redirect is OK. Article equals new article create from link. Slug equals the article slug. Cool. Change this to the article. And I think that works. Cool. Ferrari front row lockout. Nice. Fastest F1 lap in history. That's pretty cool. All right. Next part of this. Oh, I'm out of coffee. That's a problem. The coffee mugs are stacking up. Okay. Um, the next part of this is the actual post where we're actually going to save back. Here's the articles to create. So we're gonna post back a slug. We're gonna create a new article, create article in history. So this is doing this is doing a create new article command. So remove the repo from the constructor. Already did. That's why it's broken. Gone. No repository. <laughs> All right, so what I think we can do here, nothing better to watch someone coding on a Saturday morning. Oh, thank you, the one killer turtle. We can let the second killer turtle know that as well. They'll be along in a couple of years. It takes a while for killer turtles to get here. They move a little slow. Sorry. Um. <laughs> All right, so... This is something that I think we can do in parallel. What do we think? You think I can do this with a parallel four? And then we can do we can do some fun with async and await. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for G Fuel to release. They have a new um, they have a new shaker coming this week that they're releasing that they're calling Philly Philly and it's Eagles Midnight Green. I saw that and went, <gasps> I need it. I'm waiting for that to be released and I'm going to order it. I'm going to get, and I'm going to get my hands on the dock shaker too. I think so, uh, th oh, thank you, Maz. With the, with the super C sharp salute. Fusion Philly G, G Fuel. Yes, kind of. Um, actually, Philly Fusion is different, but. All right, so for this, I think I can do a I think I can do a parallel four, right? Can we do that? 
right? If I do a parallel for each. Oh, yeah. So now, right? Now I've got a source and then I've got my parallel options and what do you actually want to do with it? So my source is links to create and then my parallel options. Oh, just do it. Right? Uh, the action, yes. So, uh, I want to do something like this. Haha, <laughs> look at that. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Commander says, I remember seeing an article a few years ago where someone built a coffee machine into their PC case. Now that sounds fun. Looked cool, but I'd be worried having that much water so close to expensive electronics. Um, but so many people do water cooling now, and you see these, you know, th these double braided pipes that people have actually going through their machines. I think that's something that, uh, that you can, that, that today I think we can rely on. Uh, Voigtkampf Phil. Nice. There's somebody who, who enjoyed, uh, Blade Runner, right? Am I, am I getting that right? Blade Runner? How out of sync is the core wiki repo on GitHub with what we're seeing right now? Good question. Um, what we're working on right now is if you look in the repository, we are in the project new data branch working. Um, and I am, I was in sync. I'm about 12 files off, right? Only the changes that you've seen today are different from what's in uh, that branch. Coffee would result in CPU heating, though. Ah, but Brave Cobra, let the CPU heat the coffee. Ha ha. It's up to date to the beginning of the day. Yes, we are working in a different branch from dev. It's And it is a bit off from dev. I'm not going to lie there. I'm not going to lie to you. So I'm doing a parallel for each. Now I can throw these <clears throat> as separate commands out on the mediator and do I really need to await at that point just go it's out on the mediator and run no problem Voigtkamp but uh, should I call you Voigtkamp or should I call you Phil um yeah I want to I want to keep things as isolated as possible here and hopefully we'll get through a couple of these changes and merge into the dev branch and up to master and create a release today. All right. Um, my sinuses are still a bit dry from the uh, uh, surgery I had a week and a half ago. So we're, I go back for my recheck this week and I'm this coming week and I'm looking forward to good news because um, I'm feeling really good. There's a couple of stints in my sinuses that they're going to take out. And that's, that's going to be a party. Let me tell you. All right, so let's, these are just create article commands here. So let's create some, uh, write some create article commands. So I'm just gonna call this create command. <clears throat> and I'm, is, is that a problem that I use? Um, do we have a QA team to test it through completely? Oh, please. Oh, please. Like I'm, like I'm saving the world or something with this. Get it out there, get it running. Um, we'll create a new, create new article, right? Create new article command, right? And you can see that command right here in my solution explorer, create new article command. And a new article command <clears throat> has these couple of fields here. So what I'm going to do, Let's do this. Uh, topic. I'm actually going to put. I'm actually going to name the the fields here to make it a little bit more readable. So I'm going to grab that. Put it there. Let's put this all on one line. Um, author ID. Hmm. So this doesn't specify an author ID. So let's just make this good empty for right now. Just to get something in there. Author name, double quotes. Content is string.empty. 
And the slug is the link. All right. What? What don't you like? Does not contain a constructor that takes that many arguments. Topic, slug, content, author ID, author name. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. What are you talking about? Stupid. I feel like you could do something with live share with this somehow. Um, get the author as the current user. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Um, order is wrong. Well, order shouldn't matter because I'm specifying the names of these. <clears throat> um, but I'll I'll entertain that. Uh, st uh, topic slug content. And then get rid of that one. Okay. <clears throat> and now it's, I think Brave Cobra's right. Let's actually fill in the author as the current user and the current user information that we need to pass in there. Where is it? I want to grab it from the create page. And with regards to um, using live share, um, I have oh I have plans for live share. Um, live share is really nice. I'm gonna diverge for a minute here. I'm gonna sidebar. Come over here with Jeff for a minute. Let's talk. Live share is really great when you want to allow everybody to write code and interact directly with what it is that you're working on here inside of Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. Great interaction for that. You've seen us do that in pair programming sessions that we've hosted here on, on stream. And we're gonna be doing a bit of that when we work together with our friends in the DevOps workshop on Friday. Where I think it breaks down is when you want to show folks and you want to interact as a teacher. Think back to when you're in when you were in school, when you were in elementary school, when you were in high school, when you were in grammar school, university. When when teacher asked you a question and said, "Okay, here's our times tables. We're going to write up on the board. We're going to do multiplication," and would ask students for solutions. Teacher would ask students for solutions, and the student would either come up to the board and write in the answers. <clears throat> or would go over to a sideboard and write in their answers, or would go and fill them out on a piece of paper and turn them into the teacher, and then the teacher would review and perhaps give results, discuss. There's options there for interacting as a teacher and showing things. If I give everybody read-only access to my Visual Studio, that's nice, you can wander around and look at whatever you'd like, but to actually contribute to ask that question and say, hey, Brave Cobra, can you help me out and fill in and show us how to, how we should be creating and specifying the author stuff here? I can't just give Brave Cobra access to write into that one area of my code. I want to ask for, right, that it's a very pointed question, right? Hey, can you help me out with this? I'd like to be able to grant access and get some code back from whoever it is that we're interacting with, review it, discuss it, and apply it. It's more than just, here's access to my code. So I think, I think LiveShare does a great job of collaborating when you are doing that mob programming, that pair programming where everybody just gets in there and we're gonna work on everything together. But I think there's a next step that we need to work on. All right, enough of Jeff's sidebar. Um, Trying to clear my schedule for Friday evening this week, yes. Friday, Friday the 7th. Uh, yeah, I need to put the, I'll, I'll be creating an event on the Visual Studio channel. You'll see it over there. Um, but there'll be, there'll be a big announcement this week. Uh, talking about, about all the great stuff that we're going to be doing over there. I've got a complete schedule. Um, how can I open my email? and put that schedule in front of you without actually showing you my email. I'll come back to that. There's a square missing in the webcam view. Yeah, and it's right here. Uh, when I go up here, right, there's a little square missing right there because I wanted to hide 
right where my microphone comes in here. I wanted to keep that a little bit hidden out of the way. So, uh, yeah. All right. But yes, Friday the 7th. Are you taking code architecture suggestions? Absolutely. What, uh, Phil, we're... We're always having discussions about how we can improve our code, how we can improve our applications. Suggestions are always very welcome here, uh, especially the read-only option. The read-only option help, helps with live share significantly, gets us closer to it. Uh, oh yes, you're gonna wanna gather your team, not just to watch, but to ask questions. Join us in the chat room, let us know what questions you have because th that's why the, the uh, that's why the uh, uh, these folks are going to be doing a workshop type format with me so that we can interact and answer your questions and do more than just a breakout presentation. All right, I'm going to grab the information about the current user. We do it here on the create page. <laughs> so we grab user identity name and that's like this. works but I need a control dot here for that and get rid of this cool all right so I have my create new command and don't need that and that's okay this we want to instead do a mediator send and we're going to send, it's, is it a send or is it a publish? It's really more of a, yeah, it's a send. Uh, create command. Now. Do I need, I, that's gonna return a task and it's gonna do these in parallel. I could collect up all those tasks and then decide and just, you know, at the end, wait to make sure they're all done. Um, <laughs> right, if I put those tasks into a list and then await all. I don't think that's too bad. Blade Runner humor. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to... Looking for, looking for... All right. Um, yeah, let's put those into a task list. New list of tasks, task list, add. So it's gonna do its thing, and then I'm gonna say task dot wait all task list. Just to make sure that everything dones. Everything gets done. Everything dones? Yeah, something like that. Probably get my head shot off. <laughs> All right. So I think we've successfully gotten rid of everything there. And our tests look like they're all running successfully. Da, 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 da. Come on, give me a green bar here. Build succeeded. Yeah. There aren't any tests running through this page, so that's fine. Cool. One more page down. Next. Um, edit. Let's work on edit. Because we're actually going to have to write a little bit more code here. Because I don't think... No, we don't have an edit article command or edit article handler yet. We're going to need to build those. I agree. I doubt I need to await it. But better to be safe. Just to make sure that the mediator finishes interacting. Um, it, I don't expect it to stop there at all. Um, <laughs> so we don't need this. History, we're going to need to do history as well. Let's get rid of this one. Don't need that. Okay. So we're going to end up, we want to get rid of article history, slug history repository, and the clock here. We want to receive just our mediator here and just our mapper so that we can map into article edit. So on get, 
All right, let's, let's start nuking these. I'm gonna get rid of all of that, and instead we're going to receive I mediator, mediator. I'm gonna get rid of these. This dot mediator equals mediator. And I feel like we could almost have Why is it down? I'm gonna move that up here. Get rid of those. Refactoring mercilessly here. That's what we're doing. Um, field not a property. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, In which case, I need that. Okay. Uh, so let's get rid of this. If slug is null, not found, that's fine. I don't mind that guard clause. Here, we need the mapper for this. So we're going to receive I mapper. That's not how you spell mapper. <laughs> And we'll control dot, generate that read-only field. Good. All right. So instead of await get article by slug, we are instead going to say await mediator send, and we're going to send a new get article. Uh, yeah. All right, and we're gonna pass in our slug. So this is a default interaction, right? And it's going to return a core.domain.article. Shouldn't it be returning a DTO? Get article by slug. Um, Where do you see that? Get article by slug. In SQLite, in iArticle repository, these aren't commands. These are methods. Uh, let's see here. I think you could benefit from introducing a unit of work so that the final DB commit could be done after multiple operations. Um, interesting. Okay. I'd buy that, uh, Phil. Um, put together an put together an issue in the repository, and uh, we can we can take a look at a pull request. Absolutely. Uh, we're still dripping domain objects from the application layer. Hey, you're not showing keystrokes on screen. Oh my gosh, you're right. Moz, you're right. There we go. Cool. Um, oh, much better. All right. Yeah, we're, we're... That domain object is sneaking out instead of it returning a DTO object. Um... All right, let me get mediator in here. We'll we'll refactor to DTOs a little bit further. So this is a core domain article. If that is null, return, right? Let me make sure, is that actually capable of returning null? Yeah, 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 it's fine. Okay, so this could return null. All right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So now we need to do this mapping. Um, out of here. Where is it? Configuration, startup, configure auto mapper. All right, create new article command, article, create new comment command, comment. You know what, we might be able to do this. 
Dr. WD-40 with the big we are. Penn State! Absolutely. Thank you, doctor. Appreciate you. Uh, I'm a self-taught programming student. How long do you guys think it will take me to learn C-sharp and programming enough to get a job? That's from Sync Stuff. Um, uh, gosh. <laughs> what... Um, how, what languages do you know now? Um, what type of job are you looking to get into? Are you looking to get into game development? Are you looking to get into uh, web development? Are you looking to get into the, the development department at a, at a larger organization? Um, depends on what you're trying to get into, Sync Stuff. Um, learning the language is is one thing you need to learn a little bit about the the framework some of the practices that are out there that people use around it and then um you need to get some real experience building building some apps and that's where contributing to open source projects like like core wiki or some other things that you see out there on github will benefit you significantly so so to sync stuff i would say um Watching programming streams like this will get you right, get you familiar with some of the things that we're doing, some of the practices that we're we're embracing with this project. Um, there's a very long history of CoreWiki development that you can find on YouTube. I've even created a uh, playlist that'll show you every one of the videos where we've made changes and enhancements to this project. Um, asking questions in chat rooms, participating. In, with with our community will we'll give you a nudge in the right direction. You're going to have to spend some time um, reading and writing code in order to get there, in order to get to a point that, that you'll be uh, competent with, with C-sharp to get a job. And that, that could, take you, could take you a few weeks, could take you a month or two. Depends. Contributing to open source is a good idea that none of the books I uh, have talked about. Yeah. Yeah, contributing to open source because then you're going to get some other professionals, some other folks who are experts in it, giving you good feedback that'll point you in a better direction and hopefully encourage you to, to embrace better practices and that'll make you more valuable for an employer. Beck Bristow says, typically in DDD, the smallest unit of work is done with the aggregate root. Unit of work could be a smell that there could be an issue with the domain model. Yeah. Yeah, the, the domain model here does need some work. I'm right there with you. Um, so, oh, cool. Thank you, Brave Cobra. All right, so I'm going to, I don't, do I even need a map for this? Will it, I think it'll just map directly because these are the same names, right? I mean, um, and I'm forgetting how to use Mapper. Uh, the uh, auto mapper, right? Do I just say article equals mapper dot map? And the source is article. That's not right. That's not right. Isn't isn't there a generic type here? Article edit. Can I do that? Will that work? Will that do the thing? That's one line generic. Yeah, I thought. All right. So I'm going to give this a shot and see if I if make sure edit works that I actually get it loading. Well, that's not going to work. Uh, yeah, because I broke the edit page. Son of a gun. Um, and it's on the repository. It's on the clock. It's on slug repository. Let's do this. Let's do this, just to get it working. Um, <laughs> private read-only I clock. Right, and that should clear up all that stuff. Right, uh, once it went capital, fine. And the other one, slug repository. All right. Uh, that. Uh-huh. 
something like that. Cool. All right. I'm not actually going to use them. I just want to break it. I just want to make sure that it works. You'll need the definition, the auto mapper config, even though they're the same field names. Um, and you're learning a lot. Oh, cool. Thank you, Beck, uh, Beck Bristow. I, I appreciate that. This has been world exclusive. The only place you can see me messing up quite like this. Why did it open in Edge? Um, all right, I can't click edit because I don't have permission, so I'm going to go and log in. And now I should be able to click edit. And it does load properly. It does have the fields and things that I needed in order to edit. Fantastic. So my edit to get content is working. All right. Uh, moving along, we can get rid of that. And actually, sync stuff, another way that you can learn a little bit about projects and you can interact in an open source project is um, right as, as somebody new coming into a project, um, it, there's always folks that are looking for help writing documentation, writing unit tests, and that helps, um, it gives you credit because you're, it gives you street cred, right? It gives you credibility because you've written unit tests that show how the application has worked, how the application works or the framework or whatever. Um, and writing documentation shows that you know how it works. And both of those, right, are a good entry point into a project that uh, for the committers, right, the people who own and are the main committers to a project shows that you're interested and will um, encourage them to release and allow folks to commit more functionality. So, is article edit a view model or a DTO? Uh, let me show you that. So we've actually turned these around. Uh, we initially at one point called these DTOs because they were objects we were transferring from the server to the browser. That's more of a view model. So we've put this into a view models um, folder here. Uh, let me hit that. So this is inside of Right, this view models is inside of our core wiki project here. And we should really call this core wiki.web. So it's a it's a view model, it's something that we're using to to carry the data that we're presenting to the browser and allow the the razor template, right? That um, .NET specific formatting to format it and present on the page. So, yep, there you go. Brave Cobra's got the, the ASCII uh, um, data flow diagram there. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do the post. So when you save your edit, we need to actually save this back into the repository. So URL helpers, URL friendly. I'm... I'm okay, so some of this validation should move into the application layer. Huh. Do we put that in into the application layer or what? Yeah, that aggregate root object. Uh, Vatsal BP says, how to understand objects. Um, there's, there's a nice bit of documentation that you can find that shows the architecture, how the various objects in the layers interact with each other if you look in the GitHub repository. And you'll be able to, you can take a look at that. Um, and that'll give you a little bit of an idea of how these objects are separated from each other. Um, shouldn't we be mapping our domain object to a DTO? Yes. And use the DTO in our view model. Well, the DTO transfer transfers across application layers, okay? So, um, going back to what Brave Cover was saying, view model, DTO, domain object, and then data access object. 
our domain object is the main object that we're going to use. Um, oh, you know what? Let's open PowerPoint. Let's open PowerPoint and just draw a quick diagram. Da, 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 da. So, because I want to generically reference this without going down into the documentation. Um, all right, not arrow. So we're gonna have, right, an article domain object, okay? This is a domain object. There we go, and the, and that's going to have all of our business logic for the art for an article in it. Now, when we actually want to write this out to the database, uh, I need a cylinder. I need a cylinder. I'm looking for a cylinder. Show show me cylinder. There it is. All right, we're going to write this into the database. We are going to have an article. Uh, DAO or data access object, right? That's the, this is an article object that gets written into the database. Now, there will also be, right, a series of, no, not Siri. Go away, you. No, not you. Good thing I don't have Alexa in the room here with me. Um, I'm going to end up drawing your ASCII one-liner. Yeah. Yep. So, right, this, and this is... Da, 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 right? And this is the read stores. Insert text. I need a text block. This one. Read only stores. And we actually already have something that's going to do this in our uh, search engine capabilities. So these things are coming. We don't have one of these yet. Um, and this lives in uh, corewiki.application. This lives in corewiki.data, okay? because it's specific to the data storage mechanism that we're using. The next piece and this is actually a two-way thing, right? This is um, article DTO right? And this is in actually corewiki.core is where it should be. Um, and this is what we're going to transfer back and forth between the various applications. Okay. So this comes into here. This comes into here. This. Right, so now over here we have core wiki and we will have, right, some sort of article view model that we're presenting. And here in the future, we will have core wiki dot iPhone and that will have its own article view model. And over here we'll have core wiki dot pi and that will have its own article view model, right? Or whatever we decide. So uh, this is not a mind map. Do you use PowerPoint? Um, it's just easy and quick to grab and people can read this. Um, and you've got, you've got some nice diagramming tools here. Um, looking for that object document. You can find, if you go to branch new data, there is a docs folder here and that'll get you That'll get you some of the models and, and an architecture doc, uh, diagram that looks a bit like this. So this is how the various objects interact with each other. Right now, I want to draw a circle. No. 
this object doesn't exist yet. Right? Um, let's just take that and make it quick style. Here we go. Right? That thing doesn't exist yet. We need to build this one. Right now, we're interacting directly with that domain object. Now, the interactions that are occurring along these arrows are those command objects that we're creating in those query requests that we're making. That's what we're building here. I thought your DTO lives in the app. It does write, it, it did. We renamed it to view models and the DTO object that, that we're going to transfer around here with us is gonna become part of, I, I see what you're saying Brave Cobra about it being part of the application layer but it's something that's common that's going to be made available and used across, right? That's our transport object. Every, every system that interacts with it is going to be using it. Yes, it's the contract with the outside world. So I feel like Maybe it goes in application. All right. We're not there right now. I want to finish refactoring this stuff. Read only start. Oh, yes. Very good point. Thank you. Right. These should make them orange also. Ah, come on. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Make them like this. So they're coming. And we, we even had talk about putting our, our search stuff into Lucene. Um, and Lucene is another type of read-only store. So this is coming. So, all right. Let's take a look at finishing this edit page because I really want to deploy. Okay. Um... So this validation, now does this validation occur here or do we move that into the application? Can put some cognitive services stuff in there also. Yes, absolutely. Uh, text sentiment on articles. Text sentiment on comments, I think would be good chrono. Um, and I agree with Brave Cobra. Let, let's file an issue to define that feature. And then I think that's something that we can absolutely take a look at. Um, I'm also learning how to use PowerPoint to draw some basic diagrams. <laughs> You'd love uh, to help work on it. Without question, Chrono. There's, um, I don't take complete ownership of stuff here inside the project. That's why I have the little ticker going by at the top. These are the folks that have contributed and helped out with projects here on stream. I would love to put your name up there if you contribute and give us some great stuff. Without question. I'm always happy to encourage other developers and and we review and discuss changes that are going on here. Um, uh, honestly, fairly, and um, you know, that I don't think any of us are mean here on any of that stuff. We wanna make sure we encourage folks that we grow together. Um, but there are people like Moz who will say things like, hey, it'd be great if you had a rainbow beard in that picture. And then the rainbow beard challenge was born. I do similar diagrams in Excel. It keeps the managers happy. Look, at when, when I was a senior developer, we had a saying. Perception is reality. It's only perceived if there's a report or a meeting. If they have a meeting, you're not writing code. So write a report so that they can see what you're doing. And then it becomes reality. Does a rainbow have green? Shut up. That is, that, wow. Oof. Sick burn there. Oh my gosh. Silent Espada, good morning. I need to watch the archive. Only came on today after listening to .NET Rocks. Need to catch up. 
How's that deployment going? We're finishing some edits before we do the deployment. We have a couple of final changes we're gonna put into play here, and then we're gonna deploy, and it's gonna be an amazing end. The confetti's gonna fall from the sky. Fireworks will go off. No, I can't, I, I, I don't have budget for that. I'm sorry, we're not gonna make that happen. But it'll be fun. Uh, outro on the gray beard. Yeah, I know, right? Um, and um, um, all of the video that's on YouTube is very raw. It's everything that's out there. Um, you're gonna you're gonna want to skip around a bit. You're gonna want to fast forward a little bit. Um, and open GitHub. You know, take a look at the code. So, hey man, hey Zerk, I work at Microsoft. That's what they say on the paycheck. <laughs> I do, yes, I do work at Microsoft. Um, but I, I don't, I work at, I like to say I work for Microsoft because I don't work at an office. I work at home here. Do I know someone by the name of Roman? Okay, there's 100,000 people that work at Microsoft. <laughs> Um, I, I know a, a couple of people named Roman. Yes. If there's, it, if you'd like to have, my whispers are open. If you want to drop me a, a question about somebody, yes, I prefer not talking about somebody in public here on the chat. Many, many teams. <laughs> uh, Roman Gullivan. Okay, see, different Roman. Uh, so, of 120,000, there must be a couple hundred or more. You wouldn't believe how many people are named Fritz at Microsoft. I was shocked. Shocked. Okay. Um, let's do this. So this is... The the edit here will be actually save. Cyrilash, thank you so much for the subscription. I appreciate that. Uh, and a tier one sub. Awesome. Thank you so much. We will match that subscription. Make a donation to Girl Develop It. They help women and underserved minorities learn how to write code just like we're doing here. And if you have a Twitch Prime subscription, you can you get a free channel subscription anywhere here on Twitch. Um, if you use it with me, we'll get you that .NET bot emote and we'll make sure that you match that subscription as well, that I match that subscription as well. Is Microsoft is a family business, absolutely. Yes. Um, completely family business. No. Um, we have PWA on the project. Could you explain why that was added and the benefits of it? So we started um, we started making, gosh, that was a long time ago. We talked about progressive web apps, PWA, and we wanted to enable that type of functionality if you wanted to install CoreWiki as a progressive web app on your phone, uh, on your Windows 10 machine. Um, we need to do some more work around making it more JavaScript friendly so that that will work. But we did put in features like an RSS feed um, in order to, to make it move in that direction. We're not quite there yet, but it's, uh, it's getting there. Uh, GG, I think it's GG Nerd. Thank you for the follow. That takes us to 3480. Does Microsoft also match my donation? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. All right, let's get to this. Do it! All right already, Brave Cobra is there like, come on! All right. Um, so this, right now, the, the logic here, when you do your edit and you save, right? We check to make sure that we have a URL friendly topic. Oh my gosh, Silent Espada. Thank you so much. Yes, that does that. Uh... Whoa, hello. Benefits gifting five tier one subs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The subterrane hype. Wow. And here comes one more. 
I've got to update my uh, my notifications here so that it handles the community gifting. Wow. Thank you so, so much, Banifis. Um, let me get on in there. <laughs> uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, that is five subscriptions that Banifis gave. Twitch has a, has a uh, community gifting option here where you can you can tell Twitch give X number of subscriptions to folks in the channel. Whoa! Whoa! Thank you, Cyrilash, for for gifting two more subs. <laughs> yes, we're uh. <laughs> this is just amazing. Thank you so much. I am um, wanted to just wanted to sub with Prime. <laughs> Uh, they added that within the last month. Um, and 347 Vesta subscribed as well? Did that... It may have come through and I missed it. Uh, I don't see it, but thank you very much, 347, as well. Um, yes, I'm, I am not... Wow, the sub hype is strong this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you! Um... I'm, I, I don't, uh, gosh, I, I don't know. Um, Lannan BR, thank you very much. Wow, wow. <clears throat> um, it's, it's important to me. I don't, uh, uh, I, I want to make sure that we grow the channel. I, I very much appreciate the subs and we are going to very much uh, make sure that other folks are able to, to grow and learn with us here. So, thank you very much for all the kind words, everybody. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm floored. I'm, I'm touched. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for the, for the subscriptions. Um, gosh, that's what, about 10 subscriptions right in a row there. Wow. Wow. I'd be lying if I didn't say I was a little misty right now. Thank you very much. The PWA doesn't do anything yet, but the idea is there, yeah, for things like working offline. So it's ancient coder, it's something that we're going to we're going to enhance, we're going to grow. But the the pieces are there. Uh, what's the default admin login? It's not documented and I um the default admin login is the question out there I thought it was just the first user that gets created it makes admin um alright I want to finish this edit page here let's get this done um wow I'm I am floored. I am touched. We're we're gonna support a lot of people with those donations. Thank you, everybody. And of course, there's a you know everybody starts off with the black loyalty mug icon. Uh, yeah, I think I need to level up my loyalty icons here a little bit. Okay. Oh. Uh, let's see here. URL helpers. All right. So this is just doing a check of validation. It gets the article. make sure that it's not conflicting and then it gets the article again this time by the ID instead of the slug uh, if changed hmm. where did this come from it's a string equals comparison uh, okay. So if n if none of the content changed, <laughs> and then it does a copy in and then save. Oh, this is a pain in the neck. Oh my gosh. All right.
It, uh, I'm not sure it's in the seeding code. I think it's... Seed default use admin user to admin role. Seed default. There you go. There's the default admin username and password. All right. Um, <laughs> so there's a lot going on here that I am thinking is just a pain in the neck. I mean, this edit is from line 62 all the way down I mean, it's it's sixty lines of code here. We're gonna we're gonna have a good time ripping this thing apart. Um, gosh, what do we want to do? Where do we start? Okay, so this is our standard user interface model state check. That's fine. Let's bump that out. Almost all that can move to the handler. I agree. but the model state model error stuff. So this would be, right, if we take a look at, right, we have these command result objects that are returning exceptions. What we're returning right now inside of our edit for these model error objects, these I would turn into exceptions. Um, so that it knows how to interact with those things. And I, I agree with Brave Cobra. These are, I wanna move as much of this as possible into a edit article handler, right? So let's, let's move in that direction to start here. So uh, let's call this result and let's just, I'm just gonna stub some code and then we'll go and generate it as we're moving along here. So I'm gonna create a new, uh, edit article command. Okay. And my edit article command. Yeah, then they're going to, and we'll end up refactoring it out of these handlers into application service so that the application, the domain objects, know how to inspect and do these things. So I'm going to create a new edit article command, and let's actually just. Right, let's, uh, da, 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 da. right, I'm going to, this is going to return an I request command result, and I'm just going to start creating it right here. Edit article command, and this is an I request that's going to return a command result object. I don't know what's in it yet. We'll figure that out as we're going here. But there's my edit article command object. And we do need to, um, right, I request, shouldn't that have a, right? Yeah, okay, this is just the payload that we're carrying. All right, make sure I'm thinking that through properly. Uh, the handlers themselves should just route the requests. Yes. Okay. The handler's going to be doing a lot of logic here that we're going to move into the domain object, and we'll do that refactoring next. Um, all right, so what I'm going to move into here is what we pushed back on our edical, ed edical, article object, right? This article edit contains ID, topic, and content. But it's also, we also need to carry along with us information about the author and the version that we're working on. Hmm. The fact that the, the edit, where'd it go? The, uh, come on, Jeff, come on, Jeff. Where'd it go? The article edit object. This should contain a version number. This is the version of the article that we're working on. 
Sorry to sub and run, gotta go watch the minions. Thanks so much for joining us, Cyberlash. I really appreciate that. Uh, Kunin, Kun Herg Sock. Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us here this morning. Uh, <laughs> watching this is invaluable to someone like me learning because I get to see how the thought process works. Top of my visual studio window is cut off from the stream. Is it? No, it's not. No, yeah, we're good. That's the top of my screen where the arrow is. You're good. Scroll up. You might be all right. I feel it. I think version number needs to come into my article edit here because I want to have that version number when I push back here. All right, let's just refactor what's here first, and then we'll we'll go through this. Um, I'm gonna need to pass in my article. I'm gonna need to pass in that ID. I'm gonna need to pass in the topic and the content. So now I should be able to generate that constructor. Uh, yeah, using that. Okay, generate that constructor. And it'll actually generate some fields for me as well. Ta-da! Um, I would like these to be public though. What's a pain is I can't, right, control dot and turn these public. I know you can do that in ReSharper. And I do want these to be read only. That way they're being transported and they can't be modified along the way. They were inserted during the construction and uh, they work just fine at that point. Now, yeah, that's fine. I'd really like these to be like ca init capped, right? So I'm hitting F2 to open up the rename. Cool. All right, so now I'm carrying along those values and they're read-only. Clips it in iOS app if I stretch to the screen and not run native size. Oh. Somebody was telling me that they watch the stream sometimes on their big 80-inch widescreen TV. And that scares me. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, Commander, thank you for the subscription with a tier one. Awesome stuff. And... Uh, Gosh, we're handing out lots and lots of .NET bots today. That is fantastic. I got some um, some cool emotes that I'm probably going to take over to the Visual Studio channel for that. 78 inch. That's who it was. Lithics. Yes, mentioned that on on Twitter the other day. I, I saw that and went, "Oh man!" Oh, Eaton. Mike's Mike's statement there is making me cringe. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, feeling the love from you, Mike. Thanks so much. And, and my beard's getting to be almost Mike Eaton length. It needs to be a little bit longer here, and we're going to be in fantastic shape. I'll be in, I'll be in fine company. Mike has a has a nice size beard there as well. Not as gray as yours. No, no. We're we're uh, we're working on that. My my daughter went on her first date this week. My my oldest daughter, 14 years old, took a boy out for a horseback trail ride. The boy was terrified. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That that doesn't make me feel the least bit uh, terrified as a father. All right. We're going to want a result here that's going to be a mediator, right? We're going to do a mediator send of that command. And then based on what comes back, right? This is, we're going to await this. Now, based on what comes back, we're going to want to do something with it. Now, 
these things where we're adding model error here, right? That's very much a concern of this user interface layer. And this is a, an exception that has been thrown here. So I'm going to create exceptions over here for those things. So the first one here is topic must contain at least one alphanumeric character. Well, actually, I think we already have, right? We have a create article exception here, which I'd, I'd really rather have um, something that's a little bit more descriptive. The fact that it came out of create article, okay you know, but this is the topic must contain one numeric. This is a malformed topic, right? So this is a uh, bad topic exception, exception. Let's call it invalid topic exception. Okay. And we're gonna make this public. We're gonna make this serializable. Serializable means that it can be converted back and forth between um, between disk into a format that can either go across the wire or can uh, can go across can be saved to disk easily. Uh, where'd it go? Invalid topic exception. Now, exception. Okay, I thought there was an application exception. Yeah. So application exception is a base for defining application specific things. This is. Right, exception is the base exception type. Application exception makes it clear that this is something that uh, that we created. Do you do the Breaking Bad look on him? It can be done exactly how I want it. It will be. The only question is, are you the man to do it? Oh yes. We need object initialization with read-only fields, but that's not possible now. Uh, why public fields and not read-only auto props? Uh, let me go back to not command result, not article edit, not that one. Uh, not that one. It was the edit command. Um, I can go either way. It's so we can crash when people try to make really bad articles. I can go the other way, right? We can do this as like this. Right? That effectively does the same thing. It's just a question of how it's maintained in memory and passed around. So, um, all right. So we were creating an invalid topic exception. So we're gonna pass that message coming out. When you inherit an exception, you should actually override the constructor. Um, so let's create an constructor. Um, and there are three constructors, four. But there are three that you can pass in. So there's the message. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to put this all in one line because I'm not actually doing anything with it. Uh, let's create another one. Um, message and inner exception. Sure. Um, oops. Inner exception. And those should be over here like this. And we'll do some of that. Um, and what's the last one? Let's see. Uh, serialization info and context. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Right, and this is the protected one. Serializ 
optimization info info serial oh come on give me the give me the deal there thank you serialization right the context it's um streaming context that's what i'm thinking bazinga all right what do we got here uh, I thought guidance was not to derive from application exception. You should derive custom exceptions from the exception class. Um, you should not throw an application exception in your code. Okay. Uh, EA, is that EA Johnson? Let's open that up. Serves as the base class for application defined exceptions. You should derive custom exceptions from app exception rather than application. Okay. That remark immediately contradicts the very first line of this. You should not throw an application exception. You should not catch an application unless you intend to rethrow the original. Then what the heck do you use this for? but it's also in .NET Core. So, yeah. Fine. We'll go off of just exception. That feels weird and I'm gonna want to push back on uh, some of our documentation folks on that to get it clear up. When do you actually use this? That feels weird. I completely agree. All right, so there's our invalid topic exception. So what I want to do now is I want to create a handler for the edit article that will start doing some of these things and I'm going to end up, right? This is another type of invalid topic. It conflicts with an existing article. So that's a different message. We're gonna raise the same exception and uh, yeah, do something with that. So let's, um, I'm gonna go back over here and let's create public class edit article. Feels weird to call it command handler, but whatever. And we'll move this into its own file. Now our other command handlers implement I request handler blah 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 blah. We'll do the same thing here. Right, instead of delete article, this is edit article command. And I've got the red underline here because I need to bring in some using statements and I need to implement that interface. I need to implement that interface. I'd really like to implement that interface. There it is. Cool. All right. What do we got here? Da, 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 da. Cool. All right. So I need a constructor on this thing so that it knows what to go and get but all these be in display logic seems application layer to me. So I just want to move it out right now. I agree it needs to move. There are things that move, need to move into domain object application layer. I want to get it out of the web project. Let's start there and then we can refactor more later. So let, let's make the web project right and then we'll, we'll go in and make the other ones right. So um, over here, let's, let's actually put these two side by side because we're going to start to hammer on these. Um, okay. So I need, so I have access to URL helpers, right? What I'd, what I'd really like to do is I'd really like to grab this whole thing here right and 
other than that redirect, actually. That's what I want to do here. Now, some of it doesn't make sense. Some of it does make sense. We'll figure all of that out. And this little changed method that Ashley brought us, we'll just copy in there. Now, some of these things do exist. Some of these things don't exist. We need to figure it out. What are your intentions to program once you have the knowledge? Oh, for sync stuff. Uh, how do you make sure you remember those? Yeah, we'll do that later. Uh, we put issues in, in GitHub. We put to do. Uh, we put to do notes into our code. Um, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. Um, where where I think we are that that will be helpful later is that there's a clear right. We're we're going to clean up one project at a time. We're, we're cleaning up the web project. We're moving things here into the application project. We're going to go through the application project later and say, okay, these things belong in the domain object and we'll move stuff over to the domain. Um, but the big things that we wanted to solve with making, with decoupling the database from interacting directly with the website, we're pretty well accomplishing that with this migration right now. Um, all right, so the first things we need to do is we need to actually get a repository object. So let's, what is, well, hang on, what's this one? Uh, not all code paths, that's fine. All right, so we need a constructor to start with here and we're gonna be receiving what's going to be in our repository and that's an iArticle repository. And we'll just call that article repository, this dot repo equals <clears throat> article repository. And it doesn't know what this is yet, so let's put a using statement in there. Create one of these. All right. Now, we're receiving this request. The request object is actually where that lives. So I could just call that article, but I don't want it to be called article. I renamed it so I could get everything lined up here. I'm gonna do an F2 and I will call this edit command. And now everything lines up quite right. Look at that. Okay, string is null or white space. Well, string is a thing there, no problem. We're never returning a page. Let's get rid of those statements. Actually, hang on. <laughs> um, let's create our command result. And then what we can do, so here's our first exception. Article topic, topic must contain at least one alphanumeric character. So we're gonna make that into an exception. So we're gonna say result dot exception equals, and when we created a command result, right? Successful by default is false, right? We can be explicit about that. Okay. Um, so here we can say result.exception equals new, and it was invalid, valid topic exception. All right, let's get, what? No. Oh, rats. Hang on, I did a thing. There we go. Right, it was, yeah, invalid topic exception. New invalid topic exception, yeah. Give me, at accessibility. No. No. Public class invalid topic. Why isn't it letting me use that? Should we write some to do right now? Uh, perhaps. Right, and that should give me. Huh? Uh, get rid of that. One of these. Right, I need. Okay. 
So my message is this. And now I can return result. Right, so I've hit an exception. <coughs> Three, f three people in my family are programmers now, two are .NET, so getting a job and maybe doing a few phone apps for different things was my first goal, but they tell me to just focus on code and making things right now. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. That's not too far off. Uh, uh, Chris Jones, I submitted a PR yesterday for introducing StyleCop. I'm getting build failures on AppVar, even though it's building fine locally. Um, yeah, we need to take a look at that. Line 23, I'm missing a semi. Saying Moz. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I want to do a uh, task from result. Result. There we go. Um, new tags feature helps. Ye okay. From where can I get a valuable .NET Core tutorial? Uh, Microsoft Virtual Academy has a great .NET Core tutorial that uh, came from yours truly that you can take a look at. Uh, it's my team, Scott Hanselman, Maria Nagaga, myself, John Galloway. There are three days of tutorials there that you can watch and get, get into. Creative or IRL could <laughs> could go under ASMR. <laughs> I am not ASMR. That is not what we do here. Maybe. The music certainly is very ASMR. Um, next one here, await repository. So we need an async on this because we're doing that await. Okay. And now I don't need this. So get article repository by slug, and then here's another exception, right? This is a new, right? We can do the exact same thing with our validation from here, there, with just a different exception, and paste it in there. Ah. All right. Uh, not yet. Yes, also my YouTube. Um, all right. So instead of returning a redirect here, so this indicates we were... Hmm, nothing changed is what's being returned here. And we need to flag nothing changed and to do something different. I feel like that's, is that another exception that we're flagging? Let's do it. Let's just create another exception for that. Uh, no content changed exception. Okay. And I'm not actually going to put anything in this one. I should generate the overrides. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. No, don't do that. That's a bad idea. Don't do that. That's terrible. Generate the constructors. Sure. Why didn't I do this last time? You fool! Okay, that was pretty cool. So, yeah, let's do this. Result dot exception equals new, no content changed exception. And then instead, instead of returning that, I just return the result. So now we're flagging that information coming back out. Now here's where we're actually doing the work and we need a a Noda time clock. All right. So let's receive that I clock. 
make sure I remember the L. Okay, this underscore clock, not click, clock equals clock. Save a copy. Yeah, there we go. Microsoft Virtual Academy is free and gives certificates that can be posted on your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Here's the first place where we're, we need to reach out and do something a little bit different. Our author ID and our author name we don't have. Why am I returning an exception rather than a status? Do I need the stack trace? So we're returning a result object that has successful and then an exception object that we can use to return additional information. So this is where I'm returning that additional information. I'm using an exception object to, to load it. They should be part of the request. Yes. Um, you find what on YouTube? Yeah, oh my gosh, the bot didn't respond. Hmm. Yeah, the bot's not working. No, I have to look at that more later. Uh, I want to finish this. So the user object, I actually need to get the author ID and the author name coming in on my command. I, I need that information. So we need to expand this to include author ID and string author name. And we're gonna need that GUID object. This dot author ID equals author ID. This dot author name. Help me out here. Who's our new follower there? Thanks so much for the follow. I'm I'm sorry. I'm terrible at reading the 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 characters, uh, but I appreciate you joining us. Um, all right. So let me receive this, and we need to create. Yep. Create those properties. Cool. Okay. And I need to now pass those in, because now I've got more information that we need to send in. Which is, that is the author ID, and the author name is this. JB1, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us here. And Jay, thanks so much for the subscription. I appreciate the uh, I appreciate you using your Twitch Prime here with us, um, and and <laughs> folks on the stream that, that have been watching for a bit know uh, I'm gonna match that and we're gonna make a donation to Girl Develop It. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Jay, for the subscription. Why not just pass the whole article object? I don't want to pass the article object because then this thing needs to know what an article is. And it's more than just the article that we're passing. Um, by passing these primitive objects, right? These primitive properties. It allows us to serialize easily and we can use other transports a little bit more friendly, uh, a little bit more yeah, easily. So if we do pass the article object, then um, then our transport layer now needs to know what that article object is that we're passing around. So I could pass it, if I had the DTOs available, I could pass that perhaps. Uh, it's generally best to return a status code rather than an exception. Yes, I am returning a, a success status code, um, right? And that's for normal processing. Um, if I return some sort, of, some sort of an enumerated status code, that might be different. Yeah, the Fritz bot, we need to teach to do some new things. I think we need to spend some time on that. Ah, there we go. Taiwan, th is that Taiwan 30 centimeters? Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, 
Hello, hello. Gosh, it must be late at night where you are. Uh, but thank you for joining us here th this evening. Um, <laughs> all right, so now we're passing that information in and we'll have it here. So instead of doing this parse of all that information, I should be able to say edit command author ID and same type thing here, edit command author name. I'm not gonna change this yet. Repository update, that's fine. I need a slug repository now. So let's receive that as well. I slug history repository, slug history repository. And we called that previously this. And one of these equals that. We're gonna to need to generate one of them. And let's see, so that's gonna do all these things. Catch article not found exception. Return new article not found result. Now here, I'm gonna catch this exception. Let's catch it. And let's say, uh, come on, fingers it equals EX. I'm not gonna throw it but I'm gonna return it. That's easy. Articles to create from links. Get articles to create dot to list. Hmm. Why isn't this like the to list? Oh, you make me sad. Get my using statement there. If articles to create from links count is greater than zero, redirect to page. Uh, I don't think we... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it... Oh, uh, gosh. So this is deciding what we're doing for when we finish the page. Please program some Bitcoins for you, asks XVAC7. Uh, that's not my deal. I'm not into Bitcoin. Sorry. We're, we're having fun building this. Yeah, this is the same issue on create article. So at the end of create new article, right, we decide, well, do we need to route you somewhere else? And it creates this article created notification. That has, here's the information about it. And then isn't that, right? This should be handled somewhere, right? It gets published and it, Shouldn't you throw an exception rather re than return it? Well, I might be going across application boundaries and memory boundaries, in which case, no. I want to return it so that it can be processed and handled appropriately on the other side. There's no handler for it yet. Ah. Um, uh, gosh, Fez Fezzle Max? Thanks so much for the subscription with your Twitch Prime. Um, wow, I really appreciate that. We have had a ton of subscriptions today. Thank you so much. Um, I, I will match that and we'll make a donation to Girl Develop It. Man, I'm going to be... You guys are going to put me in the poorhouse next week, I tell you. Must be the beginning of the month. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Actually... And uh, it is the beginning of the month, come to think of it. And I'm, I'm looking at the chat room, and the, yeah, the, the bits board is cleared for the, uh, for the beginning of the month as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's open as well. All right. Um, <clears throat> but publishing that, right, coming out of, hang on, let me look at the create page. Let's look at how that one was done so I can remember how we routed out of this. 
because I do want to do very much the same thing. When you finish creating a page, right, so we, if the result is null, this is on get, okay, it's on post. So, oh, we didn't finish this, did we? Crumbs, look at that. Because we are still referencing into, is the topic available, right? We, we should have pro returned this as an exception from this to do topic is not available. All right. Uh, inspect result to ensure it ran properly. Get articles to create. Okay, so this is just a follow-up query. So I am going to take, not that one, this one. I'm going to take this, get rid of it. And we will return, well, we reached the end here. So return.successful equals true, return result. And that should take care of all of our logic that was in edit, right, right here. So now we can say, we don't need this. Uh, what we can do is we can say if result dot exception is invalid invalid oh my gosh Jeff topic exception right then we can uh, output result dot exception dot message this did the exact same thing, but I don't need it anymore because it's all wrapped up in that one exception. Existing, if existing article equals null, and then this was the whole merge, we don't need to do this here anymore. So, right, um, all right, so this was if article not found exception, we should route to article not found result. Let's preserve that information here. Let's say else if result dot exception is, and it's not results, it's result. Right, then we can do that. Cool. Uh, see what I said about to-dos? Um, yeah, well, we're almost there. Uh, articles to create from links. So this is that same bit that we have in the create page. And the redirect is going to... Um, so existing article is... Well, that's the same thing. Right, that existing article is going to be the same bits. Yeah. All right, so here, uh, wrap this with the same logic as the create page. Need to figure that out. And to get this, right, the existing article stuff well, that, right, going back over here, it gets it, and slug equals slug, old slug equals this, that's if it needs to do that bit, right? Get article by slug, and that slug information is the URL friendly on the topic. Pimplazak says, I have newbie question, which JavaScript framework do you use to do front end? And I agree with Smap, we're not currently preferring a JavaScript framework. I've done some work with Angular. Um, your mileage may vary as to which one works best for you. They've, they've all got different things. 
That's why that part should be in the handler of the created edited notification handler. Okay. A couple of streams of discussion. Oh yes. JavaScript when we get to that is going to be it's gonna be very busy. Um I feel like I need the URL helpers to determine here's the slug that we're using. Because we have the topic that was being passed in. Yeah. Um, right. And then the, the topic, which is going to be, right, article.topic. And then this is going to be, now that feels weird. Um, Feist, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Uh, what do you think of developing ASP.NET Web Forms in 2018? You can still be very productive with them. Um, Web Forms is not getting any significant new features. It's it's done. It's a framework that, that has served its purpose. Uh, it's going to continue to be supported because it's part of .NET Framework. So when there's new versions of Windows, there'll be new versions of .NET Framework. Um, but the the movement going forward to keep things in um, modern and evolving and evolving at the same pace as the web is to prefer things in .NET Core. You can certainly continue developing in web forms, but the, the motion from Microsoft is to encourage you to use .NET Core. The new versions are an improvement. Um, yeah, they, we've done some things at Microsoft to, to make it more consumable for the modern web, but I would encourage you to consider .NET Core at this point. Um, I thought everything was going to be WebAssembly, says Sync Stuff. Um, WebAssembly is a whole nother kettle of fish. You're gonna, you're going to want to um, consider WebAssembly when we talk about th those JavaScript front end components. Going to school for a batch for a bachelor's degree with a concentration in information systems. Oh, well, thank you for joining us, Feist. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Yeah, thanks for the hint that we've been going along here and we still aren't finished. Um, all right, so this logic here, articles to create from links and deciding to route over to that page. Right, we're not doing that in the create page either, right? We're still, we've still got this query and we're saying, well, we're going to redirect you over there. I think we're going to end up, I'm just going to create this exact same thing here and copy it in right there. And then I just move slug up, right? And then this is like that. I think we now accomplish the exact same thing, right? Yeah, we'll refactor later, yeah. What hint, I tell you. Do it! We're getting there, we're getting there. All right, so I think edit is locked down and works. Right, and our tests, they're still happy. Good. All right, so that's edit. And I think the only other one we really had that we wanted to refactor was history. Um, I'm not gonna hit that one right now. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to commit what we've got right now. Because I can. Refactored, uh, right, create article, right, create article from link and edit. Yep. Fantastic. Push. 
What are the green ticks in the sidebar? You haven't seen those before. Oh, um, RGU key, UK. Mm. These are, uh, this is unit testing that's being done through the live unit testing feature of Visual Studio Enterprise. Um, so if I go back into create, these indicate that tests have run against this code. Um, so live unit testing is showing me that, right? It's actually running these tests as I make changes to code. So if I came in here and made some changes, you see the little clock, it's rerunning that test, even though I only changed a couple spaces and telling me still runs successfully. So that's what's going on there. It's a way to show code coverage and give you a little bit of information about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So Chad, as a new student.NET programmer, should I focus to get ready for Blazor and WebAssembly? Uh, think more about .NET. So Blazor and WebAssembly is gonna run with .NET standard um, compatibility. Uh, Xamarin Forms, Xamarin Forms will get you into what's the new um, the Wii framework, OOUI, that folks are working on. Mr. Anthony162, thank you so much for the follow. Um, but uh, WebAssembly and Blazor is still a ways off. You know, keep an eye on it. Don't get crazy committed to it because stuff is changing uh, frequently with that right now. All right, this application is working. I, I, I'm not quite there where I want to merge this into the dev branch just yet, because I still want to get search and I want to get history merged, and we're we're not done on those. But um, I really want to deploy. I really, really want to deploy. I'm going to tag this 0 0.5 preview. Because it's not quite there yet. Did we get all the pages? No, we did not. And that's why I'm marking it as preview. But it does work. It does work. It's not completely migrated. It's not merged yet. I'll merge and make make the dev branch 0 0.5 final when we're ready. But I really want to get this working and out there so that we can talk about it. All right. So you should now see in tags, uh, it didn't reload. Come on. So the stuff that we completed is here, 0 0.5 preview. And we should actually see Interesting. I pushed that, but it doesn't show. Right? I mean, I just committed. It should have tagged this version. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I find Git in Visual Studio confusing. Is that what you're using the CL? Why I'm using the CLI? Yes. It did tag, but. Right, it should be on this branch, which is what I just pushed up. Right, it's not. Why didn't it tag the current one? Right, it's not showing the appropriate commit there that I put it on. Oh, I'm in the docs folder, thank you. There, yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, I am not gonna compare and pull request, but I do want to use this version to push out and create. I, I darn it, I want to put, <laughs> I wanna put this website up. So I'm gonna do this by hand today. Struggling with Git again? Shut up, Ocular Malice. And what the heck, portal.azure.com. Sign in as, not that one, that one. That one. How many times do I have to sign into Azure? 
Uh, you just want to deploy so that we have an example project. A uh, little bit. A little bit of that. All right. All right. Let's uh, not .NET community. We want to be on my stream. Ta-da. All right. So I am going to push up this project here and I'm gonna do it with right click deploy capabilities here in Visual Studio. I'm gonna choose publish. Uh, what do we got here? I don't want continuous delivery yet. Um, let me do a new profile, profile here. I wanna put it on app service Linux. Yes, create a new thing. What, what is that? What is that? I mouse over it and something happens. What, do I, what is this? Uh, this is weird. Okay. Uh, app name. Core wiki. Uh, sure, we'll put it on my Microsoft One. I'd really like, look at this, I've already got resource groups out here for this new hosting plan. And we'll put it in, really? I can't put it in East US? Fine, we'll put it on the West Coast. Uh, I don't need a SQL database, don't need a storage account yet. Uh, no, sorry, Ocular Mouse. I am not going to wire up the, con the continuous delivery yet. You can wire that up later. I am doing a right click. I know it's a radio button with one choice. Doesn't that weird? So. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Deploying step one. I'd like to know more about step one. Can you tell me more about step one? Next time we deploy, we nuke the DB. Next time we deploy, uh, we won't carry the database with us. So. With continuous delivery, can you roll back? Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. Do I have a Linux instance where you're creating one? It's doing something. There we go. Step one comes before step two. <laughs> Woo! Yes, it does, Smab. <laughs> uh, here we go. Da, 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 da. Come on. So much troll in chat. I know. They love picking on me, sync stuff. They do. If you want to know how to do that to the correct way, on oh yes. Next, what next uh, on Friday we are going to do amazing, amazing stuff with deploying applications directly, using all the VSTS goodness. Restore completed. Doing the thing. Output. Publish. Web publish activity. View details. Adding directory stuffs. Okay. Yep. That that all looks pretty impressive, but. Like, okay, publish succeeded. Where is it? Core wiki Azure websites dot net. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will watch as much as I can. Awesome, thank you. Linux app services was somewhat broken. The instructions kept changing. I hope they're better now. Me too, Ciantic. Me too. I'm trying to navigate to this place. Show me the thing. Find the core wiki. Send grid account app service. Yes, please. Da, 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 da. How do you know what he's going to do next Friday? Um, ne so next Friday, I'm hosting a full day, six hour DevOps workshop. We're gonna have Donovan Brown. We're gonna have Jessica Dean, Abel Wang, and Oren Novotny. And we're gonna do all kinds of cool DevOps 
fun throughout the day. Uh, oh yeah, they talk about really cool stuff. So this says it should be, there should be a thing there waiting. It's gonna work. Is it gonna work? 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 Is there a thing? Are the workshops on the stream? Yes. They're gonna be very much on the on the streams. Uh, come on. Do it. Yeah, we're going to be on the Visual Studio channel for that workshop. So you will be able to go to Twitch TV, Visual Studio, and it'll be over there. I will, of course, <clears throat> syndicate and host that content here. But, uh... Same thing. Just saw that you came up on my podcast list with .NET Rocks. Looking forward to hearing about you with the guys. Um, it was great. Service unavailable. Oh no. What did we do? I don't want to do that. Why am I getting a service unavailable? I mean, I did a right-click publish, right? You know? Um, let's try this. Let's get that. Should I play the side trombone now? Yeah, we can do that. Is that better? Credit card limit? No. No. Uh, um, let's see. I mean, it sure looks like it, it did the publish. Right? If we look at the output. I mean, that sure looks like it's, it's the deal. <clears throat> but a service unavailable. Um... Not using a database in a different region. Database is on, on disk. Uh, let's see. We should be able to SSH into this, actually. Uh, Rod McCor. Really? Thank you so much for the follow. Are you kidding? i got to go through this stupid screen again? Error connecting. <clears throat> Looks like it's not even running. You know? I mean... <clears throat> <coughs> it sure looks like it's working. Right? I mean... That... There it goes. Right? I mean, it, now it looks like it's here. <clears throat> oh my gosh. CD dubbed up root. I wonder if it wasn't all the way started up before, because now it looks like it's there. Don't do that with Edge. WebSocket server disconnected. What? Disconnected. Hmm. No, I'm not using Edge. I'm using Firefox. Right, doesn't <laughs> doesn't respond over here in Edge either. So, um, come on. Whoa! Or are you ddosing me? Ah, I see how this works. Uh, let's see here. 
right? I mean, it should have deployed and it should be out there running. I mean, it sure looks like I'm getting a lot of 500s. Um, <laughs> right? I mean... Contents here. Debugging Azure Startup. I think it's not forwarding to Kestrel. Uh, let's look at the logs. Yep, disconnected. I just got booted. Uh, logs. Ugh. No. No, no, no. Put me back in the SSH. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How does it know how to block out your subscription ID on stream? Uh, we have a little doodad here called Masks Portal. That it actually should be masking it everything. That really doesn't look right. There we go. I mean, all I did was right click and say deploy and it's not deploying properly. It's like, what? <laughs> what is the average time for you to learn a new language, bro? Bro? Um, yeah, bro who? Um, I did not restart it. Let's let's kick it. See if it restarts properly. Um, quick, call the goo. No, no, no. Uh, for me to learn a new language, I can learn a new language if I concentrate and focus on it. I can do it in a in about a week. I'll I'll be I'll be I won't be you know an expert in it, but I'll be competent in it. Um, yeah, so there you can see my subscription IDs are hidden. Um, so I clicked restart. Did it, did it do the thing? Nope. Connection refused. Hmm. I thought we already did this. Do it. Throwing lots of 500 errors. Uh, Hungarian 2? I don't know the question. Tried debugging the startup from Visual Studio. Nah. It's not built into Azure, is it? Did they add that to the Azure? No. Oh. I guess they just added that because that wasn't there before. Yeah, it's not loading. I mean, it doesn't get any simpler than that. Right click publish and it's not publishing. Hmm. Uh, let's do this. Let's delete. Let's rebuild the whole thing. Yep, delete the plan. Try and republish, but go to standard garden variety. Actions, delete profile, yep. Delete the other one also. All right, try this one more time. Let's go to normal app service, create new. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, okay, resource group, this, hosting plan, I want a new one. Oh, now we can do it in East US. And it feels like uh, I got a couple folks out there that are hammering on this, so I'm gonna go to a little bit bigger. Um, 
I don't want application insights yet. Oh, fine. Be that way. Do it. Uh... Yeah, I thought I just deleted that. Yeah, you're gonna... Um, I thought we just deleted this. And delete the plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Plenty of credit. Okay. Do it. Nope. It can take time. Patience? No. <laughs> I refuse. Lots of waiting around, and <laughs> we're being so impatient when what we're doing, right? We're setting up a brand new, brand new service, right? And we're connecting all these machines that are going to end up doing all this service for us. And uh, it's amazing how impatient we can be in getting this up and running. But it's going to be amazing when it is running. Now. While that's running, I'm going to pop open a new browser, pull it off to the side here, because I'm going to grab the domain name for this. And that service doesn't exist anymore because I just nuked it. Yeah. Zach, thank you for the follow. Look at all this crap I have built out here. It's not there yet. We'll wait. Uh, I'm going to log in in this other browser. So I'm going to deploy, let's use, um, let's use corewiki.info. So I have that domain name. That's wrong one. I clicked app. I have like four, yeah, I have four core wiki domain names. Here we go. It's all perceptions. Ten years ago, this would have taken hours. Yes. Could not connect to the remote computer. You make me sad. Do it again. Nope. Well, this isn't the least bit annoying. It's not there. There's nothing there. Nope. So just told it to publish we just told it to create <sighs> okay let's go the other way let's go the other way web app core wiki then where is it We just deleted this. This is one of those times you're telling your partner spouse, just one more minute, I'm almost done. Yeah, I, I know. I completely agree with you. I'm going to click delete again. No, this is, okay, wait a sec. This is what I just set up because it's going into that core wiki plan. That's not where it,
Oh yeah, the deletion is not instant. Oh yes, yes. There are lots of uh, replicas behind the scenes. Oh yes. Um, okay, let's do this. I'm gonna get the published profile, save that. All right, there are two of these on my machine now. I want the new one that's called CoreWiki1 Publish Settings. Let's do this. So I'm going to start publishing. I'm going to import a profile. It's in my downloads. There it is. You're kidding. delete this again I'm going to try to deploy this again new web app there, new resource group. I will call this CoreWiki the next generation. I want it on Linux. I want a new CoreWiki plan. Okay. I'm going to put this in East US. Why are you immediately putting me into premium here? Dev test, I want basic. Why are you confusing me here? Let's start with two cores. Okay, runtime stack, not PHP. Netcore 2.0, go. Uh, do, 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 Ultimately, friends don't let friends right click publish says carton purple um i'm trying to publish something that isn't isn't done yet and i completely disagree i think right click publish is a great way for folks to publish the first time continuous deployment pipelines get up and running when you need to do it repeatedly I bet Scott Hanselman wouldn't have this problem. Uh, no, he would. He absolutely would. This is... Where did it go? is it okay here it is and if I click that do I get something I haven't deployed anything yet. I expect to see something. I'm going to get the published profile. Okay, now it's there. Core Wiki, publish settings. I'm going to right click. Publish. Delete the existing profile that I have there. Start, import profile, downloads.
Names can cause problems if you delete and create a resource with the same names. It needs time to properly delete. Uh, no. Could not connect. The default is an expensive plan. Yeah, yeah. The tough part about being on a stream like this is that you can't just get up, walk around, and relax so you can get some fresh eyes. Doing the same thing over and over. Yeah, right. Um, I'm literally taking all of the defaults, and it doesn't work. Literally taking the defaults. It's not configured. It's not responding properly. I am going to delete, and I am going to rebuild... Again. New web app. And we will call this CoreWiki 4. Fine. Or wiki 4 so I give it something completely different put it in East US I don't care about the pricing tier anymore just do it sure and avoid any conflict with stuff that hasn't deleted it yes 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 okay it's in process And I will be using a custom domain. You're right. Is this the point in the stream where Jeff needs therapy? Oh, you aren't... You aren't kidding. Okay. Pin to the dashboard. Go to the resource. Okay. Here it is. I should be able to click on the URL and get the... Hey, we just deployed. Good. I want to get the published profile. Okay. I'm going to come back over here. Actions, delete profile. And I'm going to import from my downloads CoreWiki 4. Then you mean to have it on Windows OS? I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't care because none of those settings were working. Literally, I have changed any the settings and nothing works. You've seen it here on stream. And yeah. This literally happens every time on stream that I try to publish to Azure. And there it is, running on edge. Finally. All right. You still have the default administrator. I am going to register as... Right, I should be able to... Ah, okay. the other um, the other IDs and things are not available yet but I am going to configure where was it the seed right so 
So there it is. I'll be able to log in with that. Then this. All right, so I'm in as the default administrator. And I'm going to change my password. Oh, you stink. All right. So I have the, a new password. Uh, no. But it's up and running here, and we'll actually create a, another user later. What I want to do now is I want to actually wire up a custom domain. There we go. So IP address, HTTPS only. Yes, add the host name. And the host name we're going to add is corewiki.info. Okay. Da, 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 da. An A record. Uh, da, da. Yeah, I forget how to do this. An A record should map to that IP address. You also need to add a text record. That's fine. Advanced DNS. All right. So I'm adding an A record that points to that IP address. I also need to add a text record. that points to CoreWiki 4. All right. Let's see if it finds it now. Not yet. This takes, right, this I know takes a few seconds to get running. CoreWiki.net. Yes. Uh, we can turn HTTPS on in just a second. Mm -hmm. CoreWiki4, AzureWebsites.net, text record. Yeah. Oh, uh, this needs to go that, that needs to go like that. That's better. Come on. Ooh. Almost, almost there. Uh, somebody already has an account, fantastic. Need to configure external login and callbacks, yes. Um, <laughs> there we go. All right, so now we should be able to go to... Well, that's the parked domain. Let's flush DNS. No. Oh. Yeah, delete that. Hmm. Should be getting there. Right, because that's all done. HTTPS only. You have to add another C name record for dub dub dub. I 
think that works, right? That should come up here. Check your DNS, ping the name and trace route to see if it points. Still propagating. It's there. <laughs> uh, I'm in Firefox. I'm getting an Azure 404. Let's see, if we go HTTPS. It's not corewiki.org, it's corewiki.info. There we go. Forty one fourteen one oh six twenty five. All right. Why am I getting the 404? Hmm. And if I just go to straight core wiki info, yeah. I thought I just added the host name. Right? Did I not hit save or something here at the bottom? I bet you that was it. Okay. How are we doing? Can't save it until it validates. That was it. That was it. Sure looks like it. Uh, yeah. Go. I said confirm exception. Right, because this is saying it's going to Azure websites. Ah, look at that. All right. And I should be also be able to go to dub dub dub. Yep. All right. So it's there. Now it's it is pointing to a, a domain, right? It is using a cert that's that default Azure cert that shows, right? It's not uh, are, you, are you kidding? I was just using that. Now, why didn't it go to dub dub dub? Right? Oh. SSL bindings, yes please. Oh, now here's where we need to get certificates, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, and that's why they're, why it's not responding there. Yeah. Hey, Chef Brent, thanks so much for the host. Let's encrypt is the next step. Yes, yes. So we can get here. 
right? And if we go to dub dub dub, it's interesting, it's not responding at all. Hmm. But that does work. All right. So right now we are set up. Anybody can register and then can start creating content. So. Yeah. So that's fine for right now. Um, but yeah, let's get Let's Encrypt wired in here. Uh, wrong one. I hate... I just came from being logged in. Don't you need to grant people edit rights before they can edit content? Um, yes, as an author. Yes. You can't edit an existing article yet. Right? Uh, if I go back up here... Go to this... Yep. Okay. So there is an extension that'll do... Yeah, I want to install an extension. Oh, take me to the gallery then, please. Uh, where is it? Let's encrypt. Where, where the heck did it go? Azure, let's encrypt. Here we go. Yes, please, give me one of those. Do it. I'll take two. So I've got a little spinner thing. Uh, if you publish from dev, you still have to create app data manually to get it to work. Um, I think we fixed that. We, but we fixed that in the project new data folder. Um, yeah, if it'll double the security. Absolutely. All right, let's take a look. Oh, you're kidding. Y you're kidding, right? Seriously. So ensure that you have web job. Web job what? Web jobs enabled. There it is. Pending restart. Requires always on to be enabled in my app. Fine. Do it. Have I done this before? This is really difficult. Hanselman has two instructions for this. I have done this before. I've got a number of websites up and running. It's a pain in the neck. And yes, I'm struggling with this because stuff isn't responding immediately and behaving politely. Go back. So all of these features, you should be able to just click and it just works. But it is uh, misbehaving. We should fix it so that only approved people can create new posts or we can get some content that is not family friendly. Right. So you have to be an author in order to be able to create posts. Right. You can't just create a post. Um, Right. If anybody, if you just register using whatever email password combination, you do not get author access to start. Right. So if I log in, <clears throat> if I log in here now, uh, what was it? Admin, <laughs> admin at corewiki.com, which is totally bogus. And I log in with my password as admin. Add to last pass. Look at that. Looks all official and stuff. Um, interesting. It went back to CoreWiki 4 instead of CoreWiki Info. But we'll, we'll dig into that. 
roles and permissions, and there's also, I have user admin because I am admin. I am admin, hear me roar. And I can see other folks, everybody who registered. And users are not assigned to any roles. So you don't have the ability to start working with, uh, working, right? You can't edit and create content. So here we go. Azure, let's encrypt, blah, 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 blah. So the web app name, no problem. Tenant name, the subscription ID, if left. Yeah, all right, so here's where I need to key in some secret stuff for the service principle and some of these other things. And uh, I'm gonna have to do that offline. I can't do that. People are posting now. Um, they're posting comments. You need to be a user to be able to post comments. You can't create articles yet. Right, there are no new 65 views though of that homepage. Right, I as the admin can change this. Uh, this is the uh, first deployment of the core wiki application. We have been working on this uh, during live streams with Fritz and friends at Twitch. Uh, more information to come. The project is hosted at uh, GitHub, C Sharp Fritz, Core Wiki. There we go. Yep, access denied when trying to create a new article. And corewiki.info should get you there. Yeah, but the, the, um, I need to deploy the, the certificate. I'm curious why www isn't getting you there, right? Why am I getting a 404 going to that? Um, right, if I take that. Right, if I do it like that. Did you hook up www on the DNS provider side? So on my DNS provider, so there's the IP, there's the text record, that's what it needs. The URL, a URL redirect record, this feels, is that right? Ping it, nah. Uh, is that, is that right that I put the C name there? Yeah, all correct. Flush my local DNS. And then if I ping www core wiki dot info, it's going somewhere. but it's not this. You get the right one, all right. Oh my gosh, bits. Chris Jones, thank you so much for the bits. I need to wait for the DNS. I'm, not, I'm going to be so impatient. 
Yeah, I'm still getting the 198. I'm getting it from Namecheap. Uh, www.corewiki.info. Yeah, I'm getting the parking page. That's right. It is pretty fast, yeah. Um, I'm going to get rid of this URL redirect record, right? Because that just feels weird. That's not... Right? That shouldn't be there. Yeah, Commander's getting it. Right? Should this be here? I don't think that should be there. Nope, still getting the parking. Delete that first one. That's what I thought. Mm, what happens if I go to just straight HTTP? Yeah, then I get the parking page. Okay. And then this, because it's wired up to the IP, goes straight through. And even flushing your flushes, your local DNS cache in Windows, not caches from your provider. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so I will wire up Azure Let's Encrypt. I just broke it. No. It's right there. Uh, add the redirect record back in. Right, that was the URL redirect. From at to www.corewiki.info. Now, oh, why does it give me this? HTTPS. <laughs> yeah, I'm still getting the parking page. But I am getting through on the other one. So. Alright. Needs to end on a dot. These are, uh, the text record's fine. The C name is ending on a dot. So, I'm okay there. So, it'll propagate and I'll have it here. Uh, where was that propagation page? We had one. Yep, I think it's... I think we can call it. We got this. The local time zone for the user. Yeah. And it wasn't corewiki.org, it was corewiki.info. And I'm not looking for the A record, I'm looking for that C name. So that's pretty well propagated. It's just it's caching up there. And you guys can reach it. Fantastic. Alright. So after a little bit of struggling with getting that Azure profile up and running. It's deployed, it's running. We have something out there that we can put up and configure to promote CoreWiki. In the future, we are gonna wire it up to do continuous deployment. We do have some more that we need to refactor and get working. But what was important to me was that I wanted to get that, that initial bit out there. We do still have some more refactoring to do. We do still have some more, um, it, right, refactoring to finish the current project. But it works. 
it's available it's out there folks can see it that you've seen some comment on there some comments on there that's great um we'll we'll customize this a little bit more um it doesn't have all of our cool themes out here yet and that's okay we will certainly update and get more out there um and we'll have some more cool things that we can do with this. Um, Brave Cobra, I know you have some things you want to do. I've got some more edits that I want to put in here and finish finish up. Um, and our, our code, it works, right? It does what it's supposed to do. Um, we're going to, I'm going to wire up uh, the Twitter provider. I'm going to external login. I'm going to wire up a couple other external logins so that folks can log in. Um, and start interacting with this, and we'll do we'll do a bit more with it. So uh, we are add URL to readme MD on GitHub. Um, yeah. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff like that we're going to do. Uh, da -da -da. Hey, Summer Six Hundred, thank you for that kind cheer. I appreciate that. Um, of course, I, I match the cheers, and we'll, we will make donations on those. Uh, but I feel pretty good. We stumbled a little bit there in the middle with working with Azure. Um, I'm not sure why the right-click publish from within Visual Studio didn't work. It should work. Uh, and we will... Uh, I think you need to have... Summer 600, you need to have the cheer and the number butted right up against each other, and it will work. Um, yeah, no space. Um, there you go. Oh my gosh. Yes, thank you so much for that. <laughs> for that kind cheer. I, I really appreciate it. Um, Tuesday is, is when I would, am next scheduled to be back. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to run a stream on Tuesday because I'm coming back. We're taking a holiday uh, this weekend, visiting some family. Um... So I may be running on Wednesday morning instead of Thursday. Um, keep an eye on my on my Twitter. I will update the schedule here appropriately. Uh, you think I'm just Jones with Azure? Hardly any issues like I do. I have terrible issues with Azure. Azure literally does not behave for me at all. And and it takes three or four times for me to get anything working properly over there. It's It's kind of weird. Um, but thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. This, uh, this was great. We got through a ton here today. We did a lot of great refactoring. We, did, um, we deployed to Azure. We have the application running. We're separating our layers, and they're, they're doing some nice things. And it's, going to, it's becoming more and more maintainable. Um, we're going to finish that refactoring. We're going to set up continuous integration and continuous deployment here. It's, it's coming. Right, we're we're really reaching a point now where Core Wiki is feeling real. Um, hey, Denerd, <laughs> you're catching us right as we're wrapping up here. Um, I want to take a look and see if there's anybody out there that we we can host real quick, that we can raid. Uh, let's see. Oh, looks like Dev Chatter has just started. So let's raid Dev Chatter. Yep. I thought he wasn't starting for a little bit. So we will raid him. And uh, I hope you join me next time, next week. We'll get back in and we'll we'll do some more updates, getting ready for some more uh, an, an updated deployment. Um, offline, I will tune and get those secure uh, certificates out there from Let's Encrypt. So thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. I will see you next week. And uh, look forward to seeing you at the workshop on Friday. Take care.